here at the World Economic Forum. Um, it's wonderful to see uh, so many old faces, new faces as well. On behalf, uh, I'm Zarar Segal. On behalf of myself and Ikram Segal, I welcome you. Uh, before I get into introductions about our esteemed guests, I just wanted to say a little bit about VRG and digital financial inclusion. Pakistan has a national strategy of financial inclusion, which is designed to get the unbanked into the system. Well, that program, Pathfinder Group has developed a switch or a, a program, a SAR mobile account, which was designed not just to further the strategy, but, but to augment it. And this, I'm very proud to say, was designed created, and is now being implemented as a homegrown domestic Pakistan product. And I think one should be very proud as Pakistanis that this was created in Pakistan by IPATH, VRG, all of those people are here today. And you know, I'm, it's, it's with great pride I welcome them as well to, uh, to this forum. As part, of, as part of sort of bringing VRG and the Assam mobile account to other countries of the world, we have now partnered up with our great friends of the World Economic Forum, particularly the Edison Alliance. And I welcome Claude Dyer, who's the acting head of the Edison Alliance. That's the title. Uh, I, yeah. I'll, I'll give you head of Edison Alliance. How's that? Claude is obviously a friend of both uh, VRG and Pathfinder. Um, he was the first one to bring quantum computing to the World Economic Forum and was part of that program. And now has really led the push to get the underserved or the underprivileged into uh, the financial network. And so, Claude, I turn to you first. Mr. Sigal, Ali, uh, Salman, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, as our, uh, you were saying, I work with the World Economic Forum and I lead the Edison Alliance which is the forum's flagship initiative on digital inclusion, which we launched um, three years ago. You might be aware that one third of the world population does not have access to the internet today. So we've um, gathered a pretty large community of 160, 180 partners, uh, really around a common goal to see how we could collectively um, bridge the digital divide. And I see Mats from GSMA, who is one of our champions, which is a group of very, very senior leaders and CEOs and ministers, heads of UN organizations um, that are really provide guidance and leadership um, on that. So we are addressing the main barriers to universal digital inclusion, which are, of course, access to connectivity, the lack of the necessary digital infrastructure, but also affordability um, of devices, affordability of data plans, and what we call usability, which is the lack of necessary um, digital skills. Our idea to kind of expand our definition of digital inclusion to see how we could provide affordable and accessible digital solutions to underserved populations around the world. Um, so there's rapidly three things that, that we're doing. The first is we tried to, well, we gathered this community around a common goal, the One Billion Life Challenge. The idea was to set a very um, ambitious but simple challenge to see how we could provide these services to one billion people around the world by 2025. And we announced um, two days ago now, um, in a press release and several press conferences and events that um, our partners have um, reached 784 million lives uh, so far across 320 initiatives and in uh, 127 countries. So that's really great progress that we're very excited about. But what's even more interesting is thanks to this kind of reporting, we mapped out 300 initiatives and now we're making connections between partners to see if we kind of scale those and um, have a bit more of an ecosystem play because there's no lack of effort. We're seeing that there are many initiatives tackling these different issues, but there's a lack of collaboration. So we're trying to be a catalyst and provide a platform for partners to kind of come together. And we're seeing a number of partnerships emerge already from, from the Edison Alliance. The last thing is around, I would say, um, facilitating um, best practice sharing and peer learning. We have a platform for that we call the Lighthouse Countries Network. Uh, we have 11 countries that have joined us, um, five have joined us um, two days ago. And the idea is really for ministers of ICT to exchange on digital inclusion solutions that they're testing that might be replicable um, across uh, geographies. And the second is really to help them also crowd in private sector resources so they can advance their own digital inclusion agendas. So that's kind of our mission. Um, we're very proud to have VRG and the Pathfinder Group uh, part of part of this um, this great coalition. And I would like to commend you on, on reaching 10 million uh, bank accounts um, open through the Azan mobile scheme. We've participated, I've collaborated quite a bit 
Um, we ran a spotlight day uh, where we invited the entire Edison community to learn more um, because what we want is to also amplify great solutions that are, that are being deployed and that are successful uh, that, so that hopefully other partners can replicate them across um, geographies. We've produced several social media videos. I think you're showcasing the Azam yes. mobile scheme on our initiatives marketplace and our navigator, which has a thousand pieces of content today. So we're, we're really looking forward to, to continuing this, this um, great collaboration. And so I think that's very commendable um, and a great way to show that actually with existing technology, there's so much that can be done. Um, so I'll, I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you, Zarar. And, uh, you know, like, let me get the customary, but very heartfelt uh, words of appreciation to you, uh, Ikram Saab. And uh, also thank uh, all the guests uh, who are joining us, Matt, uh, Dr. Saab, Janzeb Saab. Uh, familiar faces, but we must. As leaders, we are dealers in hope, and we have to promise the world in our next generations a better world. And the question comes in, can digital do something for us? And of course it can. And it has, and it will continue to. And the stories, the inspirational stories that we just uh, saw is just a testament on what technology can do to uplift the people and bring communities together. So we want to move away from the three C's from last year through the, to the T, three T's, I would say. Uh, the theme of this year is rebuilding trust. And uh, you know, technology could be a great facilitator in building that trust. And the last component of that is going to be transparency. So technology, trust, and transparency, I think, should be the new mantra. How does jazz fit into this thing? I, you know, I want to spend a little bit more time on that. You can't build trust if your population is not included. So the whole concept of AMA, Jazz Cash, digital financial inclusion is really to bring the populace into the discussion table. The World Economic Forum, if you look at the gender gap report, Pakistan is an unenviable uh, slot, 142 out of 146 countries. That's not where I want us to be. And what can the mobile phone do for us? We can provide them with the world of opportunities, starting from education. 27 million kids still out of school. That's almost about 50% of the youth population in that segment. We would do not have enough time. We do not have enough bricks to put all of them through traditional schools. Again, a smartphone or a tablet with an internet connection is a solution. Our ambition is to put a smartphone in every hand and a broadband connection in every home. And that is a responsibility. When we say that, you know, jazz is the leading operator or jazz is this big, that leadership comes with responsibility. It is not just for, uh, you know, putting headlines in the newspaper and gloat about, you know, what we have achieved. Leadership is always about responsibilities. And we have a responsibility to the country to make sure that the access to internet, to broadband is universal. If I were, I would probably redo the SDGs and say broadband must be a universal right, just like education, clean water. But indirectly, we're still supporting seven out of those goals. So we are at the base of a number of initiatives. Telecom is no longer a sector, but a cross-sector enabler. So it helps every single sector and sectors which are important for us. Banking or finance will become fintech. Agriculture will become agritech. Education becomes edtech. Let's go back to the fintech component of it. Pakistan, um, again, has a huge opportunity. More than 75% of our adult population does not have access to a formal banking relationship. Um, we have not really expanded our banking footprint in the country. Yet, at the same time, almost every person, every second person, has a mobile phone. A lot of them feature phones, and then about 50% of them smartphones. So we realize that if we have to actually become relevant in customers' daily lives, we have to make sure that we can provide to them a banking or a financial solution through their smartphones. We're learning from people like uh, Dr. Saab over here on uh, the remarkable things that he has done. So we're humble about you know, what we can do. We have to build, borrow, and buy. But we are also very humble in terms of learning. We learn from AMA. And when Ikram Saab actually said that, listen, I've got this idea, I think he was knocking on various doors in terms of can we use the feature phone connectivity to bring your customers onto our account. And since we already had Jazz Cash, the initial thing was, well, it's going to be a competitor. And I was like, no, my competition is not Arma. 
My competition is all those people who are relying on cash. My competition is people who are not yet educated. It's not always another digital bank. It's not always a traditional bank. It's not uh, a, a different kind of player. Our competition really has to be the opportunity in the country and the responsibility that we must bear to address that opportunity. So I welcome that thing. And I know that uh, Profit Magazine um, did an article and they were really curious, like, what's your angle? Why are you supporting a competitor? I was like, we have to build the ecosystem. And the greater number of people who talk about it, that there has to be something done for financial inclusion, the better it is for me. So in a way, you helped me. I wasn't really helping you because you were advocating for inclusion at the central bank. I was doing the same thing at the telecom authority. And together, we are able to create 10 million customers who are using their feature phone to get connected to their traditional banks. Now, that wouldn't have happened if we had taken a scarcity approach. I'm very proud, uh, if I can say so, of the achievements that you've done. And we're going to be a cheerleader. And if tomorrow you are more successful than Jazz Cash, so be it. All the more power to you. But our competition, like I said, is the opportunity and the responsibility. It is not really one upping somebody else who traditionally is looked upon as a competitor. This is exciting, uh, troubling times. Uh, there's a lot more to be done. I'm certainly very excited about what lies ahead, despite all the challenges that we are aware of and that we become more aware of every single day. I thank all of you to be uh, co-participants in this exciting journey ahead, and I thank you for your time. Good morning, everyone. Indeed, like poly crisis, climate change issues, we have been suffering with this. And we are keep suffering from all the other aspects which are right now coming in. But we need to realize one thing. We need to realize one thing, like Pakistan, and what is the potential in Pakistan. So some basics around a population of 230 million, with the youth of 60%. So we are really talking about 130 million people, youth, the gold mine in Pakistan. I consider it is a gold mine. Concerning a 196.4 million subscribers of telecom operators, <coughs> means these are the potential clients, the people who have an outreach, out of which 46% are the smartphone users and 44% are still the feature phone users in Pakistan. And all those masses, and especially those youth, are actually using those feature phones. So the opportunity lies there. I totally, I totally agree with Ahmed, like the real competition is cash, the real competition is financial literacy, the real competition is like how to get the people on board on the financial services. But one we need to realize that those are the people who are very much tech savvy with respect to the mobile wallets operating because of the people like Jazz Cash, because of the people like Jazz. Those are the pioneers who actually created these rails and make them people educated that how to use these services. Because again, the issue is they are not reachable or the services which they are actually using is not interoperable. For example, if I'm using a SIM of A operator and want to open a bank account in B bank, which is not a telco led bank, that is not possible. So these issues were there and because of that, from, from year 22,000 till in 2016, we have been suffering from financial inclusion number. So from 5% to 7% to 8% and 12%, but we, but we are not, we are not going anywhere. So we need to have a sort of solution, a sort of regulations first, where the interoperability among the telecom operators and the banks need to be placed. So this is the first step. And then second step comes in how to get it implemented because every Telecom and a telecom land debt banks or a commercial bank or retail banks have their own philosophy of operating in Pakistan. They are not safe. The good part is the national financial inclusion strategy has been introduced in Pakistan in 2019. So that is something which actually made people, okay, this is the pathway and we have to follow these potentials. But in 2017, in fact, the TPSP regulations, the third party service provider regulation has been introduced in Pakistan. VRG has been called participate in that and right now we are the only entity in Pakistan who have this commercial license of third party service provider. So by virtue of this, all the telecom operators, the ecosystem first you need to have a certain scheme, a platform where every mobile user either from the smartphone or for the feature phone interact with the bank. And the bank is of its own choice. It's not like any A bank or a B bank. 
So that form platform will be need to be have there. So iPath and VRG all together made this platform. As we speak, this platform is being called as Amani platform. And the first scheme which has been introduced by the World Bank, the State Bank, PTA, is the Asan mobile account scheme. And that scheme is actually enabling all those masses who are using feature phones and by dialing just a short code from any telecom operator, you can access the banking services, you can open a bank account in less than two minutes without producing any sort of document. All the AML, KYCs and everything is automated. It's been verified online, real time, and the account's been opened directly. Let me give you an example. Right now, the army personnel who are deployed on the Gilgit Baltistan borders and on their mountains, they are using feature phones. They cannot use smartphones. It's this regulation, it's not the, the, uh, the order from the, they, they cannot use smartphones. So, how they can get their salaries? They all have AMA accounts. The salary will be directly disbursed into their accounts while standing over there. They're using their feature phones, transfer the money to their loved ones, and get all the balances and all the financial services, bill payments that have been done just in a GIF. It's the biggest use case. The people who are using these services, so a cobbler is using that service now and transferring the money and getting them also the getting money into their accounts. So no need to have the physical cash in place. So this is this is the inclusion which we are actually aiming at. As a VRG, as a Pathfinder Group company, and the vision of the Pathfinder is, is purely towards financial inclusion and government power. And for that, we are committed. We have been recognized for this solution. We have been recognized in 2022 by Queen Maxima in her speech, that if someone wants to see the poor pro system in Pakistan, go and see in Pakistan. We have been recognized by the World Economic Forum, thanks to Claude Dyer and all the other people and the team, that this platform as a VRG spotlight day, and where we have actually expressed this whole solution to the world. But this is just the beginning. We are aiming towards not only 10 million accounts, or 20 million accounts, or 30 million accounts. We want to enrich this service with multiple services. Right now, it's just the financial service. This year's aim is to include the health service into this platform. So any person, maybe living in any remote area, can directly acquire the health services or the insurance services by using the feature phone, not only the smartphone. So this is the objective. We have already collaborated with different service providers, different insurance companies providers, and we'll be launching this service in next quarter. So aim is make this platform as a single window platform for all those masses who want financial services, health services, and later on, education services. Seamless payments in Pakistan is very much possible now with the introduction of RAST by the state bank, who is directly integrated with VRG. Let me tell you that out of these 10 million accounts and the transactions, I think it's 90.2 million, 99.2 million transactions, most of those transactions being processed by the RAST. Seamlessly. There is no other scheme in Pakistan who is directly integrated with all the banks on a single scheme integrated into a single scheme and get it from the state banks. Our objective finally is not to work only towards tapping those those people who are living in the rural areas and having feature phones. Because internet penetration is going very high. Army is working very hard with the ministry. For, for the you know, low end telephone services and internet services as well. So we have planned to launch our Asan mobile account application, mobile application as well. It's been in inshallah has been inaugurated in the next month by the by the state bank governor. So now we are also moving towards in the area of where people are using mobile phones, but also require wants to acquire the financial services so they can use the app as well. So let me give you a very quick brief on this. Asan mobile account is key. Uh, this scheme is having a very basic transactions going on, but these transactions are the main transactions which have been operated by many of the masses. Right? So you can open a bank account, you have a mini statement, you have a change pain, balance inquiry, send money, bill payments. But the beauty is account linking. If you ha already have a bank account, if you want to link your bank account on this platform, you can directly link your bank account. 
let me tell you that out of 10, 10 million accounts, nearly 30% accounts are the link accounts. So that shows the success of this platform, that people are already having a bank account, but they want to use this platform, they have linked their account on this platform. So this is something really interesting. A very common model just to show you that everywhere, all the telecom operators, all the banks. This is the many-to-many -many model, the first time introduced in Asia by VRG and IPA. Right now, in Pakistan, we are looking forward to enhance the services and their IT infrastructure as well. Let me tell you one thing before I forgot. We are the only company in Pakistan who have the PSO, PSP and the TPSP license, the two licenses. This is our USP. But no, the third USP is we are the only company in Pakistan who has the PSO, PSP license, TPSP license and a cloud service, cloud license for operating end-to-end -end operations on cloud the first time in Pakistan. And I'm probably sad that cloud, cloud service provider is Garage. Powered by Jazz. So, four telecom operators, 17 banks, 10 million customers are running on cloud service of Garage. So this is the this is the amazing thing which we have done in Pakistan. I'm very proudly said that I'm working with government organizations like SCO, Special Communication Organization, to roll out this service in the Rajamir Kashmir and Pakistan. Very soon we are just going to launch this service. But national savings, the biggest, uh, I must say, one of the oldest company in Pakistan as a government entity who issued digital certificates and digital bonds. So now. A person can buy digital bonds, certificates, redeem them, get their profits by using their future funds. By using their future funds. 3.8 million active customers they have and trillions of books. But still, they are facing the same challenge. For profit disbursements, for any acquiring of any new, new certificate, they have to come to their offices. They have a long queue of people waiting there at the end of the month when the profit gets disbursed and they are going to get, get it collected in the form of cash. So we are automating that right now. If you are talking about Utility Store Corporation, Shaki Saab is here as a GM uh, uh, Utility Store Corporation. And we are automating the payment schemes where a person can come over, put their groceries and then pay through a Sun Mobile account directly. So this is right now in the POC has been done. So we are about to go live very soon. 200,000 people's unique people visits utility store corporation on a daily basis. Again, it's a government organization. We are working very closely. Zarit Rakhi Bank, the biggest agriculture bank in Pakistan. Again, the same problem for agri loans, for agri services. They have the app, but again, those farmers don't have the don't have this internet available, or maybe don't have the smartphones available. So all those services now are going to be on the future phone by using the Asana Mobile accounts. This project we have recently concluded. Recently we have run the, the RFP as well. The, one of the biggest program in the world that is due to be program of Nina Zarinan Support Program, the chairman of Nina Zarinan Support Program, sir, is here. He's very kind that he gave us time and to present the solution that the beneficiaries and all the women beneficiaries, and if I'm not wrong, sir, 9.3 million beneficiaries and all our women of business income support programs is right now we are having a word with them we already have demonstrated that how those women by using those feature phones can get the all the disbursements on a monthly level they can also have all the access of their his transaction histories and not only this for the registration process and also for the authentication of the service because sometimes because the woman is not literate so the cash provider or the agents who are giving the money, they might be, you know, just bluff them. So for every transaction, they have to have the validation on their phones, but again on the feature phones. Because those have those people who only have the feature phones available. So this is the program. We are working with them, and we are very, very much sure that we'll be going to automate this process on the you know, feature phones. VRG has become the strategic partner of Visa in Pakistan. But what is the strategic level? Because there are three main pillars. The first one, financial inclusion. For any program, for financial inclusion program, Visa is with us. And they want to know not only to invest, but also educate people with the financial literacy program. Second one is very interesting. That 
most of the government organizations, and I'm, I'm just missing Nadra people here, that Nadra is a very big organization. People go and pay with it. Unfortunately, they accept only cash, no digital payments. So for that opportunity, and because we are also moving our paradigm towards another as a, another pillar as a to go into the tap and pay services. So we are introducing the tap and pay services in the Nadra uh, e-service centers and also on the different organizations. But if it this is something which only for the government entities, and for that Nadra like Visa have given us a very high level discount. But this again going to be for the government organizations. So we are working very closely with the government organizations. Because my perspective personally is that if the government organizations get digital, where the people interact, that will create a much more bigger impact as compared to the other services or other service providers because everybody in Pakistan need any sort of government service to get the things done. So this is my whole objective. So guys, this is, this is something which ERG is focusing on, the Pathfinder group is focusing on, our objective, our investments, and our commitment. We are now replicating this model to other developing countries, but with the flagship out there, this is a Pakistani product in Morocco, in Egypt, in Sudan. I, I would like to thank again Amir, all the audiences, Sir, Vistis Corporation, all the respected audience. But please understand that Pakistan is a country where you need to invest. Pakistan is the country where all the things can happen, but at the end of the day, the results are positive. Pakistan is having something very unique, which has never been, I have seen, in any part of the world. Thank you very much. My name is Ali. I uh, lead a wonderful team of engineers in Pakistan uh, in a company called iPath and a member of the Pathfinder group of companies. Um, and we work very closely with uh, VRG uh, to build the Asan mobile account platform. Right now is basically the beginning of how AMA is going to be used in the future, because a lot of a lot of people are going to come up with their own use cases. Uh, there is going to be a lot of frugal inventions. Banks are coming up. Uh, a lot of G2P institutions are coming up. Uh, who are actually discussing different cases, how we can build around them. We're already talking uh, payment to merchants with you with USC. We're talking uh, a, a, a very uh, extraordinary uh, and very transparent dispersive, uh, disbursement model with uh, with BISP and so on and so forth. Um, but the mandate that we've set, and I think, you know, to speak about the, the far strategic vision is basically when we started doing our son mobile account was basically a devil's triangle. So, you know, you had the banks, you had the telecoms, and we had some, and we were the third party sitting somewhere in the middle trying to find our way. But once we actually built Lama, we actually revised it. and. From being a driver's triangle, it's basically a three-phase approach for us. So one is financial inclusion and banking. The other is health tech. And the third is education. And I would just want to spend a few minutes talking about our health tech platform. So we found out uh, in, the, in, the, in the North American market that healthcare data interoperability is a big challenge. Once you start visiting and going to multiple providers, uh, getting access to your medical records is, is not that easy. Every doctor is managing their own the medical records basically in their own silos. You go to a doctor, you have to reiterate your medical history, and so on and so forth. And, and in fact, we also learned that there are some cases where actually Pakistan is way far ahead in, in the US. We can send an instant bank transfer in 30 seconds or you get your money back. But you do the same thing in the, in the US and the transfer takes about three days. I hope that is going to change with Fed now. It's, uh, it's rolled out last year, uh, two years ago. So um, when, we, when we spoke about uh, healthcare interoperability, we, we found out that 80% of uh, uh, malpractice incidents take place because the data is not available from one healthcare provider to the other, other healthcare provider during care transition. One out of four Americans actually had to, uh, uh, one, uh, one out of four lab tests is basically a repeat lab test just because the, the information is not shared across the healthcare network. And this is basically when we started building the healthcare information exchange which we said is going to be is going to target the North American market. It is a it is a multifaceted solution. It solves the problem for both the providers as well as the patients. Patients are actually able to uh, use a, a white label mobile application with, with their partners, with our partners, uh, to actually uh, link all uh, link and uh, download all their medical history from uh, different providers. 
And uh, providers uh, who are part of our network can actually uh, uh, use uh, some demographic information from patients that are social security in your name to confirm. And then they're, they're actually able to get a, a complete aggregated uh, uh, record of your entire medical history across multiple labs, multiple hospitals. And we only connect to a small number of uh, sites at the moment. It's, uh, it's a little more than 61,000. Um, and uh, for, for this, we actually had to do uh, HIPAA compliance, high trust, SOC 2. Uh, uh, we were the seventh company in the world to attain the payment card industry secure life cycle uh, certification, first company in Pakistan. And we had some other small companies in the list as well, something like Oracle and Fidelity and uh, Nixdorf and so on and so forth. If we are building something so phenomenal for the North American market, why can't we just use it? and implement it in Pakistan. So it's the same way in AMA, if you, if you can solve the problem for 220 million people with the, with the fifth largest population, you can actually solve the problem for half of the world. So now what we're doing is we're actually working together with insurance providers, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with government entities, to actually build a healthcare information exchange in Pakistan. This is going to be a national uh, health record platform that we're trying to build. And uh, we already have uh, a tried, tested, running model out there. But the idea is simple. The common Pakistani is not very literate about what condition they're going through. A common Pakistani does not understand what is type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If they go to a provider, the, the provider basically has to dumb down the condition to them and explain to them what's wrong with you. And you cannot expect these people to be incapacitated walking into an emergency room and, and reiterating the medical histories. This is not possible. A lot of them don't even carry their medical statements together. So our vision is that with AMA, since we have the, the, the computerized national ID card on which the accounts are open, our, our vision is that on the same national ID card, you can walk into any hospital connected to the My MyMediport platform, and the doctor would be immediately able to retrieve your medical record, take an informed decision, and save lives. So we're looking for partners. We're working with partners. We're trying to build this together. Um, uh, we're also currently uh, partnered with, uh, with Amazon to actually do some co-innovation in the Middle East for uh, public sector. So I think uh, the idea is that if we can do it for, for someone else, why don't we, can, we use it on the home ground? And the third phase is basically education. Um, Mr. Segal has actually set a very um, um, compelling challenges for us, and education is also one of them. So we're also working in the education sector uh, trying to build quality education, working with uh, Mr. Uh, Amjad Saka Saab is also here. We're also trying, uh, we're working uh, with him, collaborating with him on certain projects. So this is basically how uh, we will converge our services together with the Assam mobile account. So you, we will have banking and finance, financial inclusion. And I think uh, uh, getting access to this data is very important. And once you have this data, then you can also work on augmented intelligence, you know, um, and we can do really exciting things with it. If somebody has, let's say, type 1 diabetes, we can, to a certain degree, predict have 20 years with a, with a certain medication and certain condition, what are, the, what, are, what, are the, what are the probability of this person actually developing high blood sugar, uh, high, high blood pressure, uh, or someone who's, who's basically going through condition A, uh, doing something else, taking certain medications and do that. So we can also work on clinical trials. We're also uh, rolling out uh, a project in the Middle East where we're actually dis discussing clinical trials and how to digitize this data together. Uh, working on data ingestion pipelines with a partnership with Amazon. We're also putting on data lakes uh, uh, for that. And so I think the future looks pretty promising for the Pathfinder Group as far as uh, the, the, the goals that we've set for ourselves, very ambitious. But I think we're on the right track with the right trajectory and the right pace. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raman Rahim. Obviously, I'd first like to thank uh, all the participants starting this cloud. And uh, you cannot imagine the amount of support we've got from the world coming from. And uh, really, uh, we are today because of the encouragement and because of the support received from them. And Claude, uh, acting or whatever, you have been absolutely the part of it right from the very beginning. Thank you very much. Um, I will take this opportunity, of course, to say again to Jazz, thank you for being there, Amit. Thank you for being there, Ali Nasir, because both of you starting with Ali and very important to Amir. I think Amir took the strategic decision which is very difficult to make and it hurts your own commercial interests. 
And I think that was something which was really, really a strategic decision which has changed the destiny of the poor in Pakistan. Just don't think it's a small It was a decision which changed the destiny. You know, we had a slogan in the 70s by one of our late prime ministers, Roti Kapra or Makan. Roti Kapra or Makan. We said bread, uh, clothes, and housing. Now, Roti Kapra, when you can understand, where would you get housing from if you don't even have a bank account? Right? So there was no cost question. Now, low cost housing will be available to those who have Asan mobile accounts, and we're already actually working on that, and a number of initiatives we're taking. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, for me, it's a proud moment, and I'd like to thank, uh, uh, you know, my people, Salman and Alisha, and all the other people who took part in developing this, and the part who supported this great issue. I just want to tell you that neither am I a financial expert. When I left the army, I thought LC, letter of credit, was a girl. So that's how much I still know about finance. And I'm not technical by any chance, which, which my son knows because he keeps on, and my daughter in law, they keep on checking me on my uh, techniques. I do this, do that. Right? The point is, we had a vision. And I had the good fortune of being backed up by my family, right? And uh, particularly by my son and uh, the others in the family, Nathar, who actually thought about it right in the beginning. And uh, then the good fortune of employing those people who went with my strategic decision. That's very important. And that was very important. And then, of course, we have gone from strength to strength. Um, uh, Alisha has spoken about Amazon, what we are doing. We are very close uh, to a um, solution there. And uh, again, uh, you know, I'm happy that a uh, representative from Visa is here. And we've uh, partnered with Visa, and Visa is not partnering uh, with us only in Pakistan. We've already uh, entered into a conversation in Egypt because of Visa, and because of Egypt, Morocco, and a number of other countries. So the sky is the limit. And like my son says, now we are open for investment. Because up till now, we have not taken a penny from outside. All the investment has been done by the company in itself. We have not got any, uh, I think we did look for some money. We found a bureaucrat sitting there who wouldn't give us the time. Right? So we never got any money from them. Right? And we had, uh, uh, we never took a bank loan. So all the money that today we have is our money. And of course, now we need to, we need, we need, we are looking forward to equity. And we are going to talk about but we're not going to uh, go sort of, we're going to sit it out and my son will decide upon whatever uh, uh, route he wants to take. I won't take this opportunity of talking to you directly, Dr. Amjitsa. You have all the good intentions in the world. BISP people don't. I'm sorry. They don't. You know, they were, let me tell you, after you said, Three months have elapsed. That man's on leave. He hasn't come back from home. He's gone somewhere else. He's not available for a meeting. Our people have been going from Karachi to him seven, eight times. They've never met him. He, the one time they met him, they've said a good word. Sagi sir, Dr. Jahanzeb is here. And I tell you, you're not going to get anywhere. The way you go to a Kuwait, mashallah, it's a, it's a phenomenal thing. But here you are in the hands of bureaucrats who are in the hands of banks. I was on the board of Bank Al-Fala for almost three years. And the money we used to earn, we used to earn from BISP. Because they were having a, a, a rollicking time. Like 10 people used to earn crores of rupees. Right? And let me tell you one thing. The Bain is in support in plan is provide food on the table. Is that money going to provide food on the table? It's not. And exactly what Amar has said, until you tie that money up with groceries, if you want to provide food on the table, it can only be used to buy groceries. Or else, of course, if it's meant for education, 
That's a separate thing that can be worked out. But that particular thing, and that is why we're working with utility stores corporation and uh, uh, the, the GMIT, who's done a marvelous work, for the four and a half thousand stores of utility stores corporation. So we are working with him. We're already integrated with him, uh, that thing, etc. And with the result that if the money goes into the AMA account and the person goes to a utility stores, he can only spend it on groceries, which is meant for. So first of all, the government of Pakistan has to decide whether it's meant for the drinks of the, the wife's husband or the son, or whether it's meant for uh, the groceries on the table. That is what it is. And, and I wish you, because this is going to be a hard road to But I would also like to say, that we've already, with Claude, we've already integrated financial inclusion. We are integrating health. And we should integrate education into that bottom platform. Which is your dream, Wef's dream, Edison Lyons dream. Please, I uh, want to thank all of you again. I want to talk uh, members who are sitting here of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the president on his telephone. But <laughs> Is here, and um, I want to thank other members. I want to thank my family, especially. They've always been supportive, and I want to thank all my staff, the people who actually put up this stand in the morning, the people who actually do the printouts, for like you know my secretary, and my others, all of them in their own way, the people who are now serving, uh, you know, which we are making here. Like which is special to Pakistan.